Hello and welcome to The Fish Nerds, a show about fish, fishing, and eating fish. I'm getting texts. I'm Clay Grove, Chief Executive Fish Nerd, Licensed Fishing Guide, and, uh, and your best friend. And I am recording live in a coffee shop in North Conway called The, um, the Met, which I used to hang out in all the time. And to bring you the news today, I've got Nate Hill, which I'll get to in a minute. He's from Hill Country Guides. But those who are new to the show, this month is National Podcast Posting Month, Nate Pod Pomo. We're doing a news story every single day this month. And we've got about 10 days left. We need your, your stories, your voice. So call the show, 607-378-FISH. Tell us your fish in the news, and we'll use it. But since I have Nate Hill with me now, I don't want to uh, waste his time, because he's very important in this town. Uh, and so here is Fish in the News. News, news, fish in the news. Everybody loves their fish in the news. All right, and this is from the Conway Daily Sun. Headline, Native Fish Coalition Has a Problem, Stocking. Uh, that's a big, bold headline. Nate Hill, by the way, is a, is a guide for Nate uh, for Hill Country Guides here in the Mount Washington Valley. Nate, good morning. Good morning. And, um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a full-time guide here in the Valley. I'm also the chair of the New Hampshire chapter of Native Fish Coalition. Um, Clay showed me last night this article coming out, and um, I thought I was going to get a chance to be interviewed by the author. and didn't get that opportunity. Um, so this is a good chance for me to kind of share my side of the story. Um, article talks about Native Fish Coalition being against stocking. And um, while we are against stocking over native fish populations, in New Hampshire, we're specifically focused on getting the wild trout management program more utilized on more of our waters and for those who don't know that the wild trout management program has inclusion based criteria so that only waters that already have self-sustaining healthy and basically recreationally uh, viable populations of wild brook trout are included and our goal, because we, we feel that we have lost a lot of our wild brook trout water over the years, is to protect the wild brook trout water that we still have left. And the wild trout management program was designed with that in mind. We're just trying to get that implemented in places where waters already qualify. And we actually have a stream in the Mount Washington Valley that I proposed get added a few years ago. It has been studied for three years and it meets the criteria um, by more than four times. So the criteria is that a water body needs to have a biomass of wild brook trout of 13 pounds a hectare or more. And the stream that we looked at has between 22 and 44 pounds a hectare or more. Um, but it hasn't been added. And so that's where our focus is. Um, in this article, you know, it kind of gets ugly where uh, a person that's not part of our organization wrote into the paper and talked about generally how stocking in New Hampshire is a problem. Um, now, I think one of the things he said yeah. uh, in the article, so th this whole article, it's, it's, it's actually a pretty long front page article, and the, the headline is very abrasive to anyone who, who fishes. Yeah. But the, the gist of the article is, is uh, it's claiming that the uh, Native, tri Native, tra Native Fish say your, say your Native Fish Coalition. <laughs> I can't even say it. Native Fish Coalition is against all stocking. Right. And then the person they quote from the coalition is not a member, and he backs it up and he says there's zero science in stocking of fish. Um, and there might be less science than one might want, but zero is kind in of New, big. In New Hampshire, he yeah. claims that, yeah. And I think that that generalization is part of the problem. Um, and they also, so they interview, I have an article in the paper where I'm specifically talking about um, an article written by Steve Andrews last week. And our, our issue with that article specifically was that in Steve's article, he purports that he's doing everything he can for wild native brook trout and that the state, he, he blames the state for stocking rainbow trout over the years and that rainbow trout have caused the a, a problem for brook trout in, and he names a bunch of rivers. Um, but one river he doesn't even mention is the Saco. And historically, I've read reports from the state back in the 1950s and one of the biologists said, we need to find out why the Saco is no longer one of the top three 
brook trout fisheries in the country. So the Saco itself was was our keystone brook trout fishery, and the Saco now. If you talk to people and ask, are there wild brook trout in the Saco, they'll probably tell you no. Yeah, and I've never actually caught a, a, a brook trout in the Saco. I catch browns, yeah. but I've never I mean, caught a brook. I've caught both wild and native brook trout in the Saco, but I'll tell you, it's tough to catch native brook trout in the Saco. Um, and so my issue with Steve saying that all these, you know, the state has sucked rainbow trout and all that is that Steve himself stocks brown trout in the Saco. And we know that brown trout... Um, from an ecological standpoint, pose a larger threat to brook trout than rainbow trout, because, specifically because they they interbreed with brook trout, they spawn at the same time, so they're competing for spawning space, and they are more piscivorous, so they have a tendency to eat minnows more often than bugs, and therefore predate on juvenile brook trout. Right, and so what's that, what's that hybrid called? The uh, tiger trout. Tiger yeah. trout. Which now, I tiger- have seen pictures of people catching wild tiger trout in the state of New Hampshire. I, I kind of want to catch one of those. Now, it, it would uh, be a unique fish to catch, a fish that's not a good sign, though. <laughs> now, 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 but tiger trout are like, uh, they're like a mule, right? They can't, they can't they reproduce. Can't. So, so would you be in favor of stocking tiger trout? Well, I mean... Or this, a mule type fish. We're getting like that. further from uh, NFC's mission. Is we really don't get want to get involved in any of that. We okay. really want to focus on, you know, these smaller waters where you know I'm a fishing guide, so I have a vested interest in making sure there are fish to be caught in the state. Right. If there's no fish, you don't make right. money. I don't make money. Yeah. So I'm not out there saying let's just you know completely change everything all at once. I want to look at how can we move things in the right direction because. From a from a guiding standpoint, wild trout provide a resource that I know is always there. Mm-hmm. There are times a year when if I were to go to a stocked water like the Saco, I'm just not going to catch much because all that's there are a few big brown trout. And that's what I personally, yeah, I go out and try to catch those because they're, they're big, they're fun to catch. They're super from fun. a guiding standpoint, it's, it's a very difficult resource to utilize. It is. And people come to New Hampshire, like they want to catch... A brook trout yeah, because it's New Hampshire state and I fish. get I yeah. do get a good number of people that are like, you know, I'll take them and and they'll say, listen, all I really want is to catch a brook trout because you can't catch those other places. So I have a vested interest as a guide in New Hampshire to pro- provide fishing. I want to be able to provide more fishing for our state heritage fish, the brook trout, and I see the best way of getting there as finding these streams that are already viable and doing as much as we can to protect them and maybe some of those fish that are in these streams do get bigger and maybe they spread downstream and you know i'm not trying to create world war three with fishing you know i mean i think there are places where stocking is is done and it it provides a really viable you know recreational fishing our lakes are a good example our lakes um i've been told that you know, the fish they put in the lakes grow faster in the lake than they do in a hatchery. And there's a high level of, you know, holdover fish. And so when you, the problem with when you do stock these wild brook trout streams is that a lot of those fish, in some cases over 60%, get eaten by predators and their life expectancy in the stream is three weeks. Now, if we know these streams are, a lot of these streams aren't heavily fished to begin with, we can assume that, you know, how many fish are, people are even fishing them in a three-week span when those fish are available to anglers? And you know, then you add to the fact that it is affecting, it from, a, from a documented scientific standpoint, they do affect what is there, the wild trout. So we just think um, that you know, the state and New Hampshire could do better and save a lot of money if we allocate our resources to places where stocking is maybe more going to be more utilized and not stocking where it just really isn't necessary right they can use those funds for other things like habitat restoration stream bank restoration right now the state's spending over 80 percent of their budget on stocking and not not a lot of it's going other places one of the areas that really needs funding is just having good having game wardens and we're short on game wardens right now and uh, those are the people that are out there making sure people are doing things by the law and saving people off mountains and i mean there's a lot of areas i was at a fishing game commission meeting on wednesday and man they were just they were fighting over money i mean there was they were fighting over buying a truck it was like a big deal so just kept people because we have listeners all over the world 
our New Hampshire fishing game is pretty unique in that it, we're not supported through our uh, income tax dollars like yeah. most states are. So the, the most of the funds comes from either federal funds or from the like an inherent tax in your tackle tax, right? It's kind of built into the price of things. But there's not a lot of money for them. So they're, they're always fighting and struggling to find a way to cover that difference. Yeah, they are. And um, I think that's our best, you know, avenue for this argument is saying, listen, you know, we're, we're not trying to, you know, tell people, you know, don't don't catch stock trout and you, you know we need to end all stocking and close hatcheries and i think that's the fear you know um i think that the hatcheries can be can be really an integral part to how the state manages its, fi- its fisheries but i also think that if we can save some money on that end and we can we can maybe create new jobs you know for a habitat specialist or habitat implementation because we do, we do have a lot of places that can use habitat work, but we, and we also have places where there's great habitat, and and all we need to do is let nature do its thing, and and I've got, I find new wild brook trout streams every year, and I'm like, man, I never even knew this one existed, you know, and um, sharing that with people and showing what we have left, because I've got a, I've got a daughter who's a year and a half, and man, I'm like, I just hope I, I can show her this stuff when she's older and then maybe she can show her kids because yeah. if we go go in the way we're going i mean we may not have what we what we have now in 10 years you know? yeah but we know we don't know but this has been going on a long time so it's hard to know it, what's going it, it has happen. but i mean I've, I've seen i've seen numbers drop in i mean i talked to dick stewart who used to own north country angler and he said oh you still catch those big wild brookies in the ellis lower ellis and Saco? and i'm like really when? When did you catch those? He's like, oh, in the 80s. In the 80s. And, and I, don't, I, I don't know. I mean, I fish the river a lot. You're and on the water every day, so yeah. It. I don't see yeah. it. And he's like, I said, maybe I'm just not catching me. He goes, no, you would. <laughs> yeah, goes, if they're there. Because I mean, if they're there, you would have got them by now. Yeah, wild. Now, now we, we've been using the term wild brookery and not the term native brookery. Yeah, What's going it, on there? I, well, I, I could say native. I should probably be saying native. Um, I say wild because... I guess it's just the word that comes to my mind first sometimes. Um, it's I was a told. Word. I was told. It is different though. <laughs> I so, was told by Fish and Game yeah. and that we don't use the word uh, native in New Hampshire much anymore because because while uh, hatchery fish were stocked over right. native fish and they've interbred so much that it's likely you won't find a native fish. Right, and and that's something that's really still being studied. Um, I I've talked to. I know of two studies the state has done on genetics with brook trout in the state, and in both cases, they've actually been surprised that the brook trout were of about 90% native strain or, or higher. Like they're pretty much native strain. That's great. Fish. And the problem with I, the danger I see with saying these are not native, they're just hatchery fish that have reproduced or held over whatever is that it devalues these fish so if you say this is if we know these are native strain fish and that they're they're a unique strain which i think a lot of wild brook trout are um from their studies then they become a more valuable thing species that's that's more important to protect let me ask you a question so i was in maine fishing last year and i caught a uh, kennebec strain of brook trout and this trout looked more like a lake trout than a brook trout. Which, you know, they're all char, right? But this thing looked like I had to look up the fish. I'd take a photo yeah. and then look it up online and see what this thing was. And sure it was it a, wasn't a, a I, I had a main char. I had a main biologist look at this thing. Yeah. And it looked and he goes, Yeah, that's a that's a Kennebec strain brook trout. Like yeah. he, he could name the river by looking at the fish. Yeah. Do we have fish like that that are so unique in I their think strains? We do. I mean I've I've caught um, brook trout on a lot of different streams and I think that's one of the things that I find so fascinating about them is when you travel around the state and you fish these different streams they all have different a different look and they all have you know slightly different par markings and spotting and some of them have you know a few really big spots and other of them are super spotted up um, they also change color like chameleons you know if you catch one in a, in a, in a shallow clear riffle they can almost look I, I, I fished a pond that we found once that I can't name because it's such a cool thing, but it's the, the brook trout in there are like silver, 
because the water is this aqua blue, right? And so they matching, they're matching their environment. And that's just probably a, a very isolated strain of fish. So yes, yeah, I mean, they're different everywhere. Yeah, Every just... stream you fish, you've got a different strain or population of brook trout, I think. That's perfect. Now I should just kind of back up a little bit. You were talking about Steve Angers earlier, and I wanted to say, uh, Steve is a friend of the show, yeah. and we're friendly with North Country Angler Fly Shop. We're just sharing the difference of opinion. This is just a story. We're telling. We don't want to yeah. alienate and, anybody. And in I this. mean, I, I want to try to focus on really just the conservation side of things. To me, you know, my only issue is if we're going to ra- be raising money, like let's use it to you know protect wild brook trout. And the state's already spending a lot of money on stocking. But you know, I, and I and I get it. You know, it, it it's too bad. You know, I really want. I really just want everybody to just try to find common ground wherever possible is the key, you know. Well, we all agree that we like catching fish. Like That's a good start. I think we all like wild brook trout, sure. you know, and I think we if we if we try to put aside, you know, I don't know, like this petty the politics and and just try to think about what can we do? Like where can we find common ground? Like if you have a problem with an idea, like let's sit down and forget coffee and sure. figure out what can we do to you know, I was talking about some to some guys up in Pittsburgh about getting some wild trout management up there, and they were like, "Well, if we do that, then it, you know, we won't be able to uh, fish this stream in the sp- in the fall because they close the season early with what WTM." And I said, "Well, yeah, let's talk about that. Maybe maybe we can get more waters added if we change slightly change things." You know? I'd be into opening the season longer. I mean, as a guide, yeah, we, mean, we seem to stop fishing when it gets good, release, right? Yeah. I, I think at and NFC believes our, our position is, you know, use as long as it is done in a, a low impact way is not the problem. You know, I mean, all, all, all these other states, there's so many states that have fishing open year round and, and they have great wild trout population. Like PA, for instance, you can fish for, for trout year round, catch and release. I think they have a season where it opens to harvest in certain areas but you know they have some of the best trout fishing in the well, country i mean we need to get away i don't i don't actually i, I don't know probably people eating fish but i think we have to get away from this five fish rule and yeah, I think I if, mean, we have a new hampshire's law is five fish or five, five pounds. pounds which is the dumbest yes yeah, dumbest rule and people have this especially the old school anglers have this um wait how's the fishing question it gets asked they go i got my limit and i think that limit as your goal has to change you know yeah. I don't even think about limits because I just because you're releasing them off fish. There's no limit when you're releasing them, right? <laughs> I, if I kept if I kept my limit every day, it, 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 there would be very few fish left. Right. And, <laughs> and, and, well, and, and also you'd have to. I tell people if I if I if I let you keep your five pounds of flesh, so to speak, yeah. every day, uh, I'd be out of business. Right. I mean, I know these some of these fish that. You know, I catch guiding. It's like, well, yeah, I've seen that one four times a season. <laughs> hey, Joey, how you doing? <laughs> All right, so. Let's let's go right back to native fish. We have about a minute left. Yeah. Besides trout, yeah. what's your favorite native New Hampshire fish? Because there's, there's about you know, only about a dozen or so actual native fishes. What's your favorite one? You know, I think are really cool are dace. Um, which which kind? Black nosed, long nosed. They're, they're super five, aggressive. There's, you know, there are five species of dace. In so let's say northern red belly dace. Yep. No, no, that's not the saco. We have black nosed dace. Red belly. Long nose, I think. Long nose, but in a real shallow area. Um, yeah. What else? That's only two, two I've caught. I, I don't know. I, I don't remember all the names. So I just, other days I've seen. I, I looked up one time. I was trying to figure out how to catch big fish in the Saco, and I yeah. was like, what is in there? And I, I looked at a biological report, and there were like five species of dace. And when we do our lecture shocking on these brook trout streams, it's very fascinating how many dace we find. There's, and there's, you just think of how It's the forage, that, right? You know, a lot of... A lot of naysayers in New Hampshire say, well, we can't have a lot of wild trout because we don't have enough forage. And when we do these electro surveys and you see how much biomass of dace there are, it's like, wow, there's a lot of food in there. So and that's what, that's what our trout eat a lot. I mean, I catch a lot of fish on dace patterns. Of course you do. <laughs> and that's so, why I like them. Well, these really smooth-bodied minnows are tiny yeah, little things. Yeah. So when I was on the quest to catch all the fish, we were going, for northern, we were going after a black-nosed dace, or oh, long-nosed dace, right? Yeah. And we, we found them in water that was less than two inches deep in the riffles yeah. and you kick over rocks and under each little boulder like we're talking like size of your hand yeah. there could be 20 or 30 of these dace just under those rocks yeah it's amazing and and I think why they're so prolific is that dace don't 
need to eat bugs. They think they, they eat algae. Yeah. You know, so phytoplankton's too. Phytoplankton's yeah. and things like that. And but so, they will eat bugs because we caught them yeah, on hook and line and they they're will. super aggressive. Number 32 hook will get them. <laughs> yes. I, we, we get them to eat small dry flies. Yeah. You know, and, and all of a sudden you're like, what is that that just hit my fly? My, my clients are like, I just had a big trout. I'm like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> the hardest fish I ever caught was a northern red bellied dace in Claremont, New Hampshire. It took me four drives from North Conway to there to oh, catch yeah. him. And I caught him. I, I, gave, so cool you did that. I gave up on fishing with spinning gear, and I caught him on a number 32 hook with a little white piece of string glued yep. to it. And, That's and, all you need. and he bit the string, and his little pharyngeal teeth got tangled in it, and I landed him in a net. His mouths are so small. They're yeah. tiny. Yeah. So yeah. really cool. Where can people find your guide service? Um, you can find me on the web. It's whitemountainflyfishing.com. If you look up Hill Country Guides, that'll pop up too. It'll pop right up. And where can yep. people find information about the Native Fish? Native, www.nativefishcoalition.org. Perfect. Thanks, Nate. Yep. Thank you. I appreciate the time. News, news, fish in the news. Everybody loves their fish in the news. All right, so that was Nate Hill from Hill Country Guides, a friend of mine, and I see him everywhere I go in the valley, it seems like, these days. Uh, but, hey, that's it. That's uh, Nate Pod Pomo, Fish in the News, and we'll see you tomorrow. Fish Nerds, out.